It's September 2019 and Apple just released the very first version of iOS operating system that is specifically made for the iPad and is aptly named iPadOS. iPadOS is the manifestation of Apple's commitment to bringing new, innovative feature sets that differentiate the iPad user experience from other devices that run iOS, like the iPhone and even to some degree, Apple TV and Apple Watch iPadOS is going to bring the iPad one step closer to being a full-fledged computer and it's going to allow people like you and me to leave our computer home or at least make the conscious decision if you really need to use your computer. That is because iPadOS is really packed with many great features that closely resemble its Mac brother including a full-featured web experience thanks to the desktop class browsing, better multitasking thanks to multi-window, slide over and split view, mouse support, the ability to store, read, and write files from an external hard drive, and last but certainly not least, file management tying it all together. There's certainly a lot to digest now that you've upgraded to iPadOS and you might not be sure where to start with unpacking all of the great features that I talked about. Well, you're in the right place because I've been using iPadOS as part of the developer beta since June and in today's video, I'm gonna give you five tips to get you started with iPadOS and talk about why it is the future of computing. I am Mike and this is Tech247 TV. Let's get started. Let's get some housekeeping items out of the way. I'll put timestamps for the different sections right below the like button in the event that you want to come back to a certain section. And also any product that I talk about today will be linked in the video description below if you want to pick up something for yourself. Now the links will take you to Amazon and if you end up purchasing something there, Amazon pays me a small commission which doesn't cost you anything. All of it ends up supporting the channel with different products to review. Now speaking of products, some of you might remember that I reviewed the Bridge Pro keyboard for the 2018 12.9 inch iPad Pro earlier this year. Now, as much as I love the keyboard and the laptop-like experience, I'm giving away my 12.9 inch Bridge Pro keyboard to one lucky winner, so make sure you stick around to the end of the view to learn how to win it. Now with the formalities out of the way, let's talk iPad OS. First things first, let's personalize the iPad to make it feel like our own. Now new this year is the ability to change the app density and layout of the iPad. You can A, choose a layout that's more compact, allowing for six apps across and five apps down, or B, you can have a large app icons that allow for five apps across and four down. Depending on how you use your iPad and really your eyesight will largely dictate on what you choose here. Now, personally speaking, I prefer to have a denser app layout opposed to having bigger app icons. That's because the denser app layout allows you to pin the Today View widget to the home screen when your iPad is in landscape mode. Pinning your Today View app to the home screen is almost like having a second dock on your iPad because you can quickly use it to consume glanceable information or launch apps much like you would do from the dock. My Today View widget contains my task management app of choice, which is going to be OmniFocus, and the battery life indicator for my iPad, which includes any accessories that are connected, including a mouse. Yes, that is right. I said mouse. The cat is out of the bag. You can connect a mouse to your iPad. Apple literally it surprised everyone this year and enabled mouse support on the iPad and iPhone. Now to level set expectations, this feature is really designed for individuals who have an accessibility issue that would prevent them from using a different input method when using the iPad. Meaning that using a mouse with the iPad works kind of like you would expect it to, but there are definitely nuances to it. Now let's pair a mouse to your iPad. Let's go and open up settings and let's head over to accessibility. Head down to the second section, which is labeled physical and motor, and then select the first setting, which is titled touch. Now you need to enable the first option, which is called assistive touch. Now, once this is enabled, this is going to add an on-screen menu button that's always on unless you turn off the always show menu toggle in the pointer device section. Now that assistive touch is enabled, let's click on the devices, which is the first setting you see there labeled pointer devices. Tap on Bluetooth devices and then put your mouse into pairing mode. My mouse of choice is the MX Master 2S from Logitech, which has five buttons, each of which can be mapped to an, a function on iPadOS. Now that our mouse is connected, let's tap on the information icon to the right of the mouse's name. And here's where you'll map each of the buttons. Now for me, I only see three buttons here, so I will need to add two more buttons for the ones that are not shown. I will tap Customize, then I'll press the physical button on my mouse, which iOS recognizes as button five, and I will map it to a function. You'll really need to experiment here with what function you want it to execute. Now I'm going to use one button for notifications and one button for home. You can also change the size and color of the pointer in the assistive touch pointer style menu. Pro tip, if you plan to use a mouse regularly with your iPad or iPhone, I would suggest adding the accessibility toggle in control center so that you can remove the on-screen menu very quickly. 
All right, so now that we have your mouse set up, let's do some real work here. Now, this is probably my single favorite update this year because it's gonna release the constraints that so many of us felt with using the iPad as our primary computing device, and that's gonna be the ability to multitask with a high degree of effectiveness. Now, there are paradigms in iPadOS this year which for multitasking, which are gonna be exclusive to the iPad, and they will not come to the iPhone. It's slide over, slit view, and multi-window support. The first enhancement coming to multitasking is gonna be for slide over, which was originally introduced in iOS 11 a few years back. Now slide over has been updated to allow for multiple apps to be active in a slide over pane and users can quickly switch between those apps by swiping along the bottom the same exact way that you do on your iPhone. To use slide over, you'll need to have at least one app open already while you go ahead and drag another app up from the dock and place it on top like so. Now, if you haven't already customized your dock to an extensive degree, you need to get on it because this is where you're gonna benefit the most from adding your favorite apps into the dock. Second, you can get a view of all the open apps in slide over by swiping up on the bar, which is located along the bottom of one of the apps. And apps can be closed by swiping up like you do in any other app. Third, you can put an app that's currently open in slide over into side by side by dragging down on the bar located at the top and then adjusting the split view window as you want. The next change coming to multitasking is the most significant updates is gonna be in split view. Split view is a paradigm that we're all probably familiar with. However, now it's supercharged because you can open up multiple instances of the same app and switch between the open windows. Now this is system wide with the exception of a couple apps, including Apple Music. Now let's open Safari. Let's open up another instance of Safari in side by side, which will result in being able to independently control and work in two Safari windows at the same time. Now let's bring up the bottom dock and short press on the Safari icon. From there, we see five contextual options. Let's choose the first option, which is show all windows, which brings up a view similar to Expose, what you see on Mac OS. And this is gonna lead us right into the third change, multitasking, it's multi-window support. You could really almost do this to your heart's content, allowing for different workspaces depending on what you want to accomplish. Now that and having side-by-side -side windows open is not limited to multiple windows of the same app, meaning that you can have Safari and OmniFocus, Safari and Messages, Safari and Drafts. Now building on the theme of productivity, it's almost always been challenging to type on the iPad while you're holding it, but thankfully Apple is bringing quick path typing to the iPad this year. Now quick path typing, this is actually what's gonna shrink the keyboard down to iPhone size and allow you to drag your finger across spelling words, much like you do with like Swipe or Gboard without the creepiness of a third party watching your every keystroke. Now you can activate quick path typing one of two ways. Either A, you tap on the keyboard glyph in the bottom row while the keyboard's full size and then click floating. Or B, you pinch on the keyboard and shrink it down. In either instance, you can make the keyboard full size again by pinching it out. And for all the people out there that love emojis, there's now one button access on the bottom left-hand side of the keyboard. Last, but certainly not least in terms of features, iPadOS enables Safari to function as a desktop class browser, meaning there are no more mobile web pages unless you want them that way. And who wants that? Now by extension, this really great feature has a few implications to it. First, you can navigate and work in any of the popular websites like Google Docs, Dropbox, Squarespace, YouTube Creator Studio, and just about any other website without needing an app. And Safari now includes a download manager. Like what? A download manager? Yep, this is gonna allow you to download content and store it locally on your iPad. Mind blown. Anything that you download through your iPad or your iPhone is gonna sync between your devices if you're using iCloud Drive. And fourth, you can point the download manager to any location, including external storage. Wait, what? Yes, you heard me correctly. You can even connect external storage to your iPad or your iPhone and manage the files on there as you would a Mac, and it doesn't matter whether you have an old or a new iPad. If it runs iOS 13 or iPadOS, you can connect external storage to it but there's a little bit of a nuance. I don't, I'll let you down gently here. Now the second and third generation iPad Pro, meaning the 12.9 inch and the 10.5 inch that were released in 2017 and have a lightning port, or the current generation 12.9 and 11 inch iPad Pro that have a USB-C port support USB 3.0. Any other iPad or iPhone out there is only gonna be capable of USB 2.0 speeds, including that brand new iPhone 11 and iPhone 11 Pro that we just bought. Now that's a little bit of a bummer, but it's still early days for the support. Now what I'll do is I'll create a new video talking through any of the changes to external drive support and link it in the card above. As I talked about in the beginning of the video, I'm giving away my Bridge Pro keyboard that works with the 2018 12.9 inch iPad Pro. 
In order to be eligible to win the contest, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and leave a comment down below on how iPadOS is just going to change your workflow, and I will pick a random comment on October 30th at 7 p.m. Now there's more T's and C's in the description below, and that's going to do it for me today. There's more content planned in terms of a full iPadOS review, and I still have my iPhone 11 and iPhone 11 Pro review coming out, so make sure you're subscribed with notifications to be notified when that content hits. I am Mike Caputo, and this is Tech 24-7 TV. Hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll talk to you in the next one.